Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University, and welcome to Vlog 97, setting up your PhD, setting yourself up for success. This vlog comes via request from Jess, a big hello to Jess, and she said I talk a lot about a set-up document that I distribute to my students two weeks before they commence their candidature. And I've talked about this set-up document when I'm training PhD supervisors and also when I'm talking to you, our wonderful students. And so Jess wanted me to share that document and talk about its value for doctoral education. And yes, it is a set up document. So two weeks before the first meeting I have with a PhD student, I send them this document and I ask them to fill it in and we talk through it in the first meeting. So I am also, yes, as per request, yes, sharing this document with you. So if you look below, you look blue in the information section of this YouTube video, you will see a link that takes you to a digital version of that setup document. It's there for you to use, to download. Please knock yourself out, use it in any way that you see fit. But if you look down in the comments and down in the information section, you will see the setup document. But Jess did also want me to talk about the document itself and also the notion of setting up a PhD before the enrolment actually takes place. And yes, this document has a lot of values. It is diagnostic, so it tells me about you, your strengths, your weaknesses, but I think probably the most important part of this setup document is it helps you overtly and with consciousness configure a relationship with your supervisor. So it ensures that that relationship is sound and solid. And the final bit I think of what this setup document does is it is prescriptive. It says to you, right, what is your first year going to look like? And instead of just sort of flapping about, it asks that you start to nail down some variables in your research project that is important at the early stage. So it is quite significant for the project. It asks you to sort of work out why the project matters at this early stage. And that becomes important as I'll describe later on. So for all our wonderful students at Flinders University that are about to start, hello, we are so excited to have you with us and welcome. For our students that are about to start, this document could be of real use to you. But wherever you are in your candidature, even right at the end, it might be a moment just to make yourself a cup of coffee and look at this document and pause and consider where you are now and your motivations, your expectations and your assumptions about your PhD. Now, I give this to all my students and all my students finish very quickly. They finish in three years. And one of the reasons I think they finish is because of this set up document. And I give it to all my students, the students I've taught from first year. I've had a lot of students that from the first year, the first lecture of their first year, I taught them. And I taught them all the way through to the completion of their PhD. I have a group like that. But I also have a wonderful group of students that arrive uh, and the first time I actually physically meet them is when I pick them up at the airport. So we have no history, no expectations, nothing at all. And I would argue both these groups, the group you know incredibly well and the group you don't know at all, both groups need a set up document, but of course for different reasons. But the primary reason I think is so many and indeed too many assumptions exist between supervisors and students. Uh, for those students that we've known since first year, we've often supervised their honours dissertation, we assume we know each other really well and everything's cool and everything is groovy and of course that is the pathway to madness, that is the pathway to a really nasty breakup of a supervisory relationship because assumptions kill PhDs. Let me say that again. Assumptions kill PhDs. If PhD students enter a program thinking that it's just going to be like honours, then we are in trouble from the very start. So when I hear people, academic students say, oh look, a PhD is like honours, just bigger. That is the path to madness. You would also be wrong. 
the PhD is very distinct and very distinctive from an honours dissertation. Very, very different radically different. So for students who know me and I know them well, the setup document is absolutely crucial because this is a line in the sand. This document is a moment of overt discussion to state we had this great relationship and all these experiences, but you know what? This is different. This is going to be different. Our relationship will change and my expectations of you will change. And that's a particularly challenging conversation to have if the students obviously attained first class honours. I'm a big believer in first class honours. It is a rare and very precious qualification and mark, very precious. But even with first class honours, there needs to be this avert recognition that a PhD is new, it's challenging, it's innovative. You are about to do something that 99% of the world's population could not do. So thinking that this is business as usual is again delusional. This is business as unusual. That's what a PhD is. I also try and make as many points avert as possible between the student and teacher relationship. So it's very important that we make sure that expectations and motivations about frequency of meetings, about feedback, about the discourse and the caliber through which we have our conversation, all those variables are discussed overtly and agreed on. We need to negotiate this relationship with honesty, with clarity and with precision. Assumptions kill a PhD. Always remember that. So we talk through in this setup document expectations, motivations, goals, time management and task management. So we work on the relationship between the student and the supervisor right at the start. So we think about those regularity of meetings. So no one gets disappointed and disillusioned three or six months in from the start. We nail this down. So also if students have an impairment, then we talk about that right at the start if they choose to. So if students with an impairment wish to disclose that, then that's great. Please do it at the first meeting if you are comfortable. And from that disclosure, we can configure modifications and enabling strategies to ensure you have a stellar candidature. It remains your choice. It remains in your gift. But also, if you do disclose impairment issues, we can start to create a culture of support around you. Now, for the new students who don't really remotely know their supervisor beyond a few emails and maybe some Skype discussions, that relationship has to be built from the ground up. So that's actually quite healthy, and this setup document provides the discourse, provides the talking points, if you will, to discuss the nature of a PhD. So what is this actually going to look like? And we don't know each other, so let's use these talking points to start to get comfortable with each other. So yes, this setup document organises the personal relationship. Now that might see, be seen to be a bit, oh, that's a bit soft, that's a bit naff, why are we spending so much time talking about the nature of the relationship? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. The difference between the students who finish a PhD and the students who leave a program has nothing to do with the intellectual ability of the student. So whether you finish a PhD or whether you leave a PhD has nothing to do with your intellectual ability, none. All the studies around the world have shown they look at the attrition of PhD students and you know what, intellectually, the students that finish, the students that leave are of equal ability. What's the difference between a student that finishes and a student that pulls out? the calibre of the supervision. Boom. Okay. So it is important therefore to work on that relationship. That relationship will get you through difficult times. The second major task of this setup document is to actually look at the project. So we've looked at you, we've looked at your supervisor, we've looked at the relationship. Now let's look at the project. Now let's look at the research. And what the setup document does, to be frank, is enact backward mapping, time management, and yes, task management. 
There are two reasons, I think, that this is important, that we focus on the project in the first meeting. Firstly, it gives you a flying start to your first year. The characteristic of students that finish in three years or the minimum time internationally is they have a flying start in the first year. You have a good first year, boom, you've got a pretty good chance of getting this thing through. Your first year must be amazing and that set up document gives you that energy and that momentum and if you like the backward mapping to give you that startling first year. You're not going to muck about because you've planned what you're going to do in the first week, in the first month and the first year. Secondly, the setup document also asks you to specify, to write down why your project matters, why your project is meaningful. So right from the start, why are you doing this? Why do we care? Why do we give a damn? And therefore, with these sort of difficult thoughts, you start to be able to frame the important sentence. My original contribution to knowledge is you need to have an end to that sentence. And also, if you do the setup document properly, it stops you getting lost in your project. So, you know, you don't sort of go down a cold sack and go, all right, well, that's terribly interesting. But how does that connect with your PhD? It keeps all the tentacles together, so you're going down the highway rather than getting yourself down a roundabout and a cul-de-sac. So make sure from week one, you have an answer to the key question. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And of course, in difficult times, you go, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And you know what? I need you every day to have an answer to that question. So this setup document is also predictive, as I've talked about. It asks you right at the start to predict the shape of your research and even prescribing possible chapters or topics of interest. But it also, and this is really important in the setup document, so important for all disciplines, it asks you to list who are the key researchers in your field. List them. What are the key articles? What are the key texts in your field? And list them. Now, if you're savvy, once you've put in place the list of the key researchers, the key publications, you can then construct Google Scholar alerts, and so every new citation, every new piece that mentions them starts to come directly into your inbox from the first week of your candidature. Right, so the final reason we have this setup document is diagnostic, and this is crucial, so important. What I need students to do is, with honesty and clarity, log right at the start their strengths and their weaknesses. And you need to trust your supervisor enough to share those strengths and weaknesses with them. So if you do have writing issues, if you've got media literacy or information literacy issues, then disclose it, talk about it. And remember your supervisor and indeed the Office of Graduate Research will be able to provide suites of support around you. It's all available to plug in as you require. So if there's software, if there's interfaces that you would like to use, then engage in that specific skill development right at the start. So don't be embarrassed. Feel free, please, log the worries, log the challenges, log the weaknesses, and then together the supervisory team can address them right at the start. And this is the information literacy bit of this vlog, and I don't talk about it enough, and it's one of my great passions in my research career, but information literacy is the key skill set in education, let alone in a PhD program. And librarians are so valuable to a higher degree. Yes, I've always described libraries as the cranium of a culture, but librarians, the skill set, the expertise, the knowledge that librarians have can make your life easier. Meet your librarians early, get to know them well. And it is amazing, almost on a daily basis, students come into my office and say, oh look Tara, I'm looking at this particular research area and there's nothing. There's no research in this area. I'm the first researcher in this area. And then I just simply go to my computer, I open up Google Scholar, and I put in three or four keywords about their research. And this actually happened yesterday. Uh, put like four keywords into Google Scholar, press enter, 
and on an area where the student said there was absolutely no research, there were 1,265 articles on that topic since 2016. So that's a proxy that the student doesn't have information literacy skills, does not actually understand how to operate keywords, maybe doesn't understand enough in terms of the content to be able to get good data sets. So digitisation, as I've written about a lot in my career, poses a whole series of problems and challenges for reading, for writing and thinking. But it also has incredible advantages in terms of speed and in terms of internationalising our research. So it is important that you know, you really know, how to mobilise the full capacity of the online digitised research environment. It will change your life. So please make sure you hold the information literacy skills that are required to do a PhD. It's so important. Yes, it will save you time. And please don't assume if you're using Twitter, if you're using Facebook, that you have any understanding how to do deep digital research very different skill sets. Now many of you have heard me say uh, through these vlogs but also throughout my career that beginnings matter but endings matter more. Beginnings matter but endings matter more. And the key I've always argued to a quick PhD completion is making sure that your motivations are expressed and they are distinct from the assumptions that you bring into a PhD program. I want your assumptions revealed, I want your skill sets and your skill deficits talked about and resolved, and I want predictive planning for your research put in place. So most importantly, I think that's what the PhD setup document does. It is the foundation for the first key conversation between the student and the supervisor. My first meetings take two hours and we go through the setup document one page at a time and talk about it. So my meetings, my first meetings in particular, are very highly structured. They really matter and they are the foundation for what we do. I often get asked around the world why all my PhD students finish quickly and all of them have finished quickly and the students that I've taken on as rescue doctorates who have been enrolled for eight and nine years then come into my candidature and finish quickly. So this is not an accident, this is not a vibe, this is not luck. This is andragogy. This is the deployment of a learning theory in a careful and considered way in the doctoral space. So there's no accidents in my candidatures. There is no accident in my supervisory structures. And you know, there are many reasons that my students finish quickly, but two involve, firstly, this setup document. This setup document distributed in the first meeting saves at least six months of a candidature and probably a year, because all the possible problems are discussed and talked through with care and respect in week one. So the setup document saves months, perhaps even a year. And of course, I think the other reason my PhD students get through quickly is what happens at the end, beginning and endings. The ending with the 10 cycles of drafts. So we don't have a blowout in drafting or feedback. There are 10 drafts, 10 weeks, and we get the thesis through. So beginnings and endings. And I think it was T.S. Eliot, I think, who used the line in the four quartets, the end is where we start from. The end is where we start from. Not a big T.S. Eliot fan, love the four quartets though. The end is where we start from. And think about your ending. Your ending is a successful examination at the conclusion of three years of candidature. That's what your ending looks like. So your beginnings must have that ending in mind. So please feel free to use the setup document. It has a link below, please use it. And contact me directly if you'd like it rendered more bespoke and more customised for your particular disciplines and your particular context or challenges or problems. Really happy to do that. My time remains your time. So Jess, 
Thank you so much for this suggestion. Again, it's one of those vlogs that I would never have thought of doing ever without your suggestion. So you rule, you are the queen to rule them all, wonderful Jess. And I thank you very much for the suggestion. I hope it was useful. And as always, from beautiful Flinders University, I wish you love, light, and peace. Tea out.